Okay, hi there. Welcome to a video where we're going to explore some of the key short-term factors that can affect a country's economic growth. So what is short-term growth? Well, short-term growth is the increase in the value of a nation's real GDP that happens within the, the phase of a business cycle. For example, an economy such as the UK uh, might be in the recovery phase after a recession or after a shock, such as the global economic crisis or the pandemic. A short-term growth of GDP uh, leads to an increase in, and this is a key concept, capacity utilisation. And therefore, as capacity utilisation goes up, the, uh, the amount of spare capacity, land, labour and capital goes down. And that includes, we expect to see, the rate of unemployment in the labour market. Now, short-term growth can be shown by a movement from within the production possibility frontier closer towards the PPF boundary. So a quick reminder of how we can show short-term growth using a PPF diagram. So here we have an economy that can make manufactured products and services. And initially, they're at point, uh, point A, uh, producing M1 manufactured goods and S1 services. Now, point A shows an economy operating well below or well within their production possibility frontier. And that point lying within the PPF implies unemployed or underutilised resources. And this is where the economy has a negative output gap and has plenty of spare productive capacity. So, a movement from point A to point B, that is short-term economic growth. Uh, aggregate demand is increasing for goods and services, and that leads to an expansion of short-run aggregate supply, production goes up, and therefore an increase in the utilisation of resources such as labour and capital. And we can see that the economy is there producing more of both types of product. A movement from B to C is also short-run economic growth, an increase in actual GDP. So movements from within the PPF towards the frontier is essentially short-run economic growth. So how do we show long-run growth using a PPF diagram? Well, hopefully you've spotted this. If that is short-term growth from A to B and from B to C, then long-run growth is illustrated by an outward shift of the production possibility curve from PPF1 to PPF2. And that represents long-run economic growth. In other words, there's been an increase and in expansion of an economy's productive potential. That allows us, for example, to reach up from C to D. That would shift as an equivalent of an increase in a country's long-run aggregate supply. OK, so focusing just for a little bit on short term growth, what are some of the key factors that can influence short run growth of GDP? Let's go back to our chart, which we showed in the previous video, looking at the, the economic cycle for the UK. So short term growth is any period of time where the economy is uh, increasing in size, the, the, the size of GDP, the level of production in real terms is going up. And there are many factors that can influence pardon me, the short term growth. Some of them are policy decisions. So, for example, there could be a period of very low interest rates set by a nation's central bank. And low interest rates tend to encourage consumers to borrow money, to save less, to take perhaps um, more money out on credit and therefore spend more. And businesses might be encouraged to invest more if the cost of borrowing is low. Governments may run expansionary or reflationary fiscal policies, for example, cutting direct and indirect taxes, direct taxes such as income tax and national insurance, and indirect taxes such as uh, VAT. And they may well spend more, including on infrastructure projects, or they may well decide to borrow more money. So fiscal policy can act as a stimulant or a stimulus to short-term growth. Countries that are open to trade may see their growth boosted by having a weaker or favourable competitive exchange rate. Uh, that helps to boost the, the value and the volume of exports and may also improve their trade balance. And growth is also driven by periods of time when the, the value of assets is going up. Property and shares, and this can lead to positive wealth effects. Growth is stimulated by more people finding work, more people having a job, fewer people unemployed, and also if their incomes rise faster than inflation, so that in real terms they have greater spending power. 
And of course, we tend to associate fast growth with periods of time where consumer and business confidence is increasing. And that can drive not just higher consumer spending, but also an increase in investment. And oftentimes, the growth of an economy in the short term is, is linked to, dependent on, what's happening to growth in other countries. So, for example, over 40% of UK trade is with the European Union. If countries such as Germany and France and Holland and Spain are doing better in economic terms, then perhaps we can sell more exports to those growing economies, which would add to our growth rate. Trade deals, for example, can stimulate exports and drive the short-term growth dynamic. Now, it might be worth, worth taking a, a, slide, a, a, a screen grab of this slide. It does give you seven really key factors that can cause growth of the economy. And one way of modelling this is to show an outward shift in aggregate demand from AD1 to AD2, causing an expansion of output. You move up the short run aggregate supply curve, and there's a new level of national income of Y2 compared to Y1. And if we put in the long and average aggregate supply curve uh, potential output, we can see that in the short term, if growth happens, and if the economy is growing more quickly than productive potential, that is going to help close a negative output gap. So there we go. This has been a focus on short-run growth. In the next video, we'll take a few minutes to think about the causes of the factors determining long-run economic growth.